Hello everybody, welcome to the fourth video about Keyclock Identity and Access Management System. Today I am going to discuss about Keyclock Realms. When you logged into the Keyclock system, Realm Settings section is open for you by default. Here you can see there are many tabs under this section and many types of configurations can be done using this section. In this video, I am not going to cover everything, but I will provide you the basic knowledge to manage a real. After that, you can go through Keyclock documentation and learn other realm configuration stuff. Before talking about realm settings, let's talk about what is a Keyclock realm. As I mentioned in the previous video, realm manages entities such as users, roles, clients and so on. Any change a user makes inside a particular realm belongs only to that realm. You can create new realms using this drop down. Click add realm. You can provide a name you like. Then click create. Now a new realm is created for us. You need to switch back to the previous realm. You can switch it from this drop down. Now I am going back to the master realm. You need to keep in mind that master realm is a special realm among the other realms we create. Master realm is the default realm created by Keyclock when we start the Keyclock server for the first time. When you create the initial admin user, that account is also created in the master realm. Admin account holders of the master realm can manage other realms as well. Due to this reason, it is not recommended to use master realm to manage users and applications of your organization. Instead, you should create a separate realm to manage organizational resources and allow master realm access only for the super users. It is also possible to disable the master realm and define admin accounts within each individual new realm you create. Let's go through the realm settings. Now I am in the general tab. From this field you can change the realm name. Uh, from display name and HTML display name fields, you can change the name. Those changes will be displayed in the login page. Front end URL field used to set hostname and URL for external clients. Enabled switch is used to allow or disallow master realm access to other users. User managed access switch is used to allow or disallow users to manage their resources and permission. We can talk on this in later videos. Next you can check OpenID Connect and SAML endpoints by clicking these two endpoints. These are the OpenID endpoints provided by the Keyclock. If you have changed the front end URL, some of these URLs are changed according to that. You can check SAML ID provider metadata as well. Now I am going to the login tab. This tab contains configurations related to user login and registration. All of these configurations are self-explanatory. Also you can use the tooltips to get more information. Therefore, I am not going to explain these things here. You can understand them very easily. Now I am going to the keys section. Keyclock server uses keys to create digital signatures and encrypt data. You can manage those keys using this section. Now I am going to the email tab. Uh, normally Keyclock uses an email server to verify user emails. In this section, you can configure 
and email server Foki Clock. Now I'm going to the themes tab. Here you can customize key clock themes. From this tab, you can clear key clock cache. Key clock has three types of caches as shown here. Realm cache, user cache and key cache. You can clear those caches from this tab. And I am not talking about tokens and client registration tabs in this video. In future videos, we can discuss on those sections. Now I'm directly moving to the security defenses tab. We can set different types of security headers using headers subsection. Also, we can enable brute force attack detection and prevent them using brute force detection section. So these are the details I wanted to discuss in this video. See you in the next video. Thank you very much.